Yeah, what do you got here? Well, you had just mentioned a few moments ago how some of the plants like edges of things, and this is a very common weed all over Canada, and um, it, it wasn't here. It's interesting that a lot of the wild plants that we talk about weren't here 400 years ago. Right. Uh, a lot of things like the dandelion were brought over intentionally, right? and uh, it's so ironical that we love the dandelion because it's so good for liver and kidney issues, uh, but uh, our habit until recently has been to dump all sorts of chemicals on lawns, which, you know what, like lawns started as a way to say, I have so much money I can waste this land, right? right. Like that's what kings and princes and dukes and whatnot did. They could say, I'm just going to keep taxing you and steal all your food. Right. You need to grow groceries in your yard, but yeah, I'm going to yeah. come and steal your food and I can just have a lawn. Right? So, so we brought the dandelion over intentionally for liver work and it, and it comes up so early in the spring. Nice right. spring greens and people have been eating a lot of stale things through the winter from root cellars and whatnot. So, so we welcomed it, but then we started spraying lawns and city parks and whatnot with um, chemicals that, guess what, get in through your skin, through your feet, yeah. and, and so dogs and kids are playing and everything else, and, and uh, those chemicals are really hard on our livers, which is, there, there's an old East Indian word called prashna parada, and I just love it, it means a crime against wisdom, and, right. and, and, and like that's what we've been doing with dandelion. So now, in Europe, they're, they're growing huge plantations of dandelions, all the major tire companies have discovered that you know, this isn't a, a, a wussy thing. There, there's already trucks, big trucks, buses, race cars on the road with latex uh, from dandelions. You no know, way. When you break the stem. Wow. And, and that latex, if you break the stem from a dandelion stem and put it on a wart, yeah. uh, three <laughs> to five times a day for at least a week, they, they dries up warts. It's antifungal. Wow. So no more duct tape. All you need is dandelion <laughs> juice. See? Right. Yeah. Anyway, this one was never here. And then... The, the seed head, this is called plantain, the yeah. Latin name is plantigo, and the seed heads sometimes can be this big or even tinier, it just depends how much light they're getting. You can see the leaves here are quite variable in size, and sometimes when you get these in a, a nice shady, moist, summer, woodsy area, the, these leaves will be as big as romaine lettuce, and, and taste as good too. Yeah. Now these, these two larger ones are in the shade, and mm, now if I had made a Caesar salad with this, yeah. You know, you wouldn't know the difference. No, you know? amazing. Like it's, it, that's a good green. Yeah. So you don't have to be starving to death to, to be wanting to eat that. But a really nice thing to know this plant for is that when you crush it up like this, if you just got hit by a wasp and you put a little poultice like that on the sting, right. it takes about a minute maybe, yeah. and it's completely gone. Right. But if you take it away, pain comes back. So you got to put it on with some tape or sometimes we've tied it on. Kids on a hike, we might use some. Somebody had a hanky, or I think once we used a bread bag just because that's right. all we had and tied it around the, a boy's leg. And So kids are often amazed with that one. So really good drawing agent uh, uh, as a poultice. It helps draw infection, stings, venom, um, anything like that. And a really good edible uh, as well. So um, the thought was it was never here. And as white people started engaging native guides, the... They were going on routes where the natives were always barefoot or in moccasins, occasionally a horse. But white people had to bring all their stuff. Right. Like we needed screws and you know stained glass windows for churches and all this stuff. We got pianos. We got to drag stuff in a big wagon. Yeah. And and walking behind the wagon trains were the the early livestock. So there'd be sheep and cows and stuff. So these the seeds from this plant are a little bit kind of like flax. Uh, you know how you might find flax seeds from your nine grain bread on a knife in your drawer or right. made through the dishwasher and stuff, they stick to things. So the, the seeds from, from this will get caught up in digestive tracts of animals we eat it, but also just in the, in the fur or hair of you know, right. sheep and stuff. So you've got animals waddling along behind the, uh, the wagon and where the wagon created ruts, the seeds will spring up. So if you took a bunch of this seed and spread it on a nice healthy lawn, yeah. nothing will happen. But, but if a paper boy comes by on a rainy day and does a little U.E. throwing your paper on the porch right. and there's a little rut, there'll be yeah. five plantain in there by the end of the week. Ah. So it's kind of an opportunist. Yeah. So it likes growing on the edge of things, the edge of paths, the edge of creeks and things like that. And because we were making a mess when we moved west across this beautiful land, um, in about 118 different native dialects, um, this plant became known as white man's footprints. Because right. wherever we showed up, this plant showed up. 
and they've never seen it before, right? So it's kind of interesting, but it's very yeah. useful. And you just like where a lot of people want this out of their yard and they put Roundup on it, I, I want to always have some in my yard because it just works so brilliantly on a wasp sting. Yeah, no, you know, totally. So Wasping, bee stings, yeah. those kinds of things. Yeah. Probably a lot of this stuff growing around Fort Mac. Yeah. Like you'd think, hey? Right. So this is um, a very recognizable plant for most Canadians. It's called fireweed. And it's one of the first things that comes in out of the ashes after a, a big forest fire. Useful entirely through the growing season. Um, it, it's too late now, being um, the first of July already, to um, see any young ones. But when they first come up in the spring, and they're about this high, and this isn't why they're called fireweed, but they look like a little flame. They're, they're right. orangey red. They're about this high, and those are so delicious, just raw to just eat a bowl of them. They're, they're just brilliant. Yeah. So fireweed, if it's real happy, might get about nine feet tall. Wow. And what I like to do is make sure that I have a little stand of them growing at the very back of my garden, because they're really tall. And then they, they're, they're going to keep blooming. It's what we call an indeterminate inflorescence. So this plant will keep blooming and blooming and blooming. If it doesn't frost, it'll be still flowering in October. Wow. Right? And so the entire uh, racing, it's called this floral arrangement, uh, is creating a, an incredible amount of seed. Yeah. So if you leave the ones at the back to go to seed, then all the seed spreads through the garden, and then you get those babies first thing in the spring for salads. And then through the summer, the flowers are edible. The, the younger leaves are great, even uh, raw. When you get the big mature leaves, they're starting to get a little more flavor, but I still chop them up. If they're growing in some shade, you can chop that up and put it in a, yeah. uh, a salad or, or do a pureed green, like to make a herb soup or something with them. You know, they're, they're quite lovely. Mm -hmm. and, um, nice the, flavor, too. Yeah, they're um, really good. Very, very nice, useful plant. And there's a lot of medicinal things, too, that we'll, we'll cover in the course. But, you know, it's one that's easily identified and a very good survival food. Um, we have quite a number of species of, of wild violets that grow throughout western Canada. There's, there's little ones like this. The leaves are about this big viola adunca. They're, they're up early in the spring, so it's called the early blue violet. Yeah. And then higher uh, into the mountains a bit, there's yellow ones. The western Canada violet <clears throat> will blanket whole hillsides in, in shady areas. And it's kind of, you know, when we go back to the ancient Greeks, well, here's some bigger ones down here. I'll just pick one of these. Blaine's yard is full we, of what would many would consider weeds, but uh, as you're learning, these are, these are well, wonderful. Well, ironically, the, the worst weed in my yard would be lawn. Like <laughs> right. if my neighbors don't mow their lawn in time and the lawn goes to seed, and then right. I got lawn coming up in my herb beds, I just, <laughs> gosh. And yeah. they don't make, you know, not that I would buy it, but Roundup is for things that are round. You know, they, they don't right. have a skinny up for to <laughs> kill up. grass with. You know, it, yeah. yeah. Anyway, uh, the ancient Greeks put a lot of faith in that um, they're called plant signatures. What a plant looks like will give us an indication as to what some of its uses might be. Right. So you can see that as a perfect little heart shape. It, it's called chordate. Yeah. And and so duh, what's the clue there that that this might be? You know, good for something, I think it's good for your heart. Yeah. So the old herbalists called violets blood sweeteners or cleansers. And uh, this is what today we call alternatives, where they don't do anything real fast or real dramatic. But um, using uh, violet greens just sort of cleans up your blood and all your vital organs over time, gently, uh, such that all sorts of diseases, even cancer, doesn't want to live there because it's too clean. You know, right. you kind of think of it living in ghettos. Yeah. Um, all of our violets, including the domestic ones like pansies, so the, the genus for violets is viola, yeah. and, and uh, the pansies, there's all the different hybrids in the store, it's called viola tricolor, and they're all completely edible, all of all them. Right. Right? And so those little flowers, these are wilted already, but those little flowers are, you know, get some bigger ones, or pansies. Yeah. Really fun this time of year if you're having a, a little stampede party or something like that, um, somebody's birthday party kids. Um, Put pansies or violets in your ice cube trays. Right. And then, you know, whether it's freshy or something for the, the kids or fruit juice or cocktails, or margaritas. Yeah. And you got all these little flowers winking around in your in your glass, so it's just kind of fun. Yeah. And you can, um, something that, uh, I don't know if I'm going to pull this off here right now. It's a really fun little trick that the stems. Uh, there you go, I got one. You got one going? You get the, just the center out of the stem. And it tastes exactly like double bubble bubble gum. It's you so know? true. It's a little a little string down the middle. Yeah. And you get just that string up. It was just crazy. 
It's, yeah. it's like I'm having flashbacks to grade two. No, for you sure. Know? You get the kids onto that, and you know, you suggest a wild food walk. You say, "All right, there's going to be violets. There'll be yeah. that, that flavor." It's um, uh, people of all ages. I've I've done events uh, with this sort of information from um, eight-year-old summer camp groups to elder hostel, and um, uh, it works great for all ages. It's it's just fascinating and. Um, uh, I heard you uh, on something, a little interview uh, the other day, talking about how, you know, it's impossible to, like I have about 1,100 species arranged in Latin in my head. Wow. You, you, don't, you don't get there on a weekend, right? It, yeah. it takes, it's kind of like telling a joke, and the best thing you can do after doing a live class is go back out with your books and see how many the next weekend you can find again and remember. Right. And then each summer your, your repertoire uh, grows, and, and then you're just in this comfort place where, no matter where, if, if I'm getting out of a kayak or a helicopter or whatever in my travels, I'm just looking around yeah. to see who's here. I've got some old friends here. You know, I can say, yeah. oh, there's, there's Yarrow. I mean, I have a friend named Yarrow, <laughs> but a uh, mutual friend. Yeah. But um, um, there's Yarrow and there's some plantain and, you know, and you just, it's like saying hi to old yeah. friends. So it, it, it's a lot to know and it's a lot of fun learning. So yeah. we, it's good times. Okay, good. Well, thanks, thanks for being here and sharing. All right. Thank you all. All right.